Osteoid osteoma. Osteoid osteoma is a benign bone forming neoplasm. It has a small nidus of neoplastic tissue surrounded by a heavy zone of reactive mature bone. It is usually located intracortically in the diaphysis of long bones. The proximal femur around the area of the lesser trochanter is a favorite location. The femur and tibia are the most common locations in addition to the posterior elements of the spine. For example, the pedicles or the lamina. Osteoastioma is the most common benign tumor of the carpal bones. It affects males more than females. 70% of the patients are younger than 20 years old. Osteoid osteoma can look like a stress fracture. If the lesion has large bone reaction, rule out a stress fracture. A stress fracture produces more linear radiolucency. With osteoid osteoma, you will have a central lucent nidus area surrounded by a sclerotic area. The nidus is oval or round, and it is well demarcated. The nidus is a deletic lesion. The diameter of the nidus is usually less than 1.5 cm. The nidus have a self-limited growth. The osteoastioma usually becomes asymptomatic and spontaneously heals. CT scan and MRI will show the lesion as well circumscribed and a cortically based lesion with significant surrounding edema. You will find increased uptake, hot bone scan. Osteoastioma is a painful condition worse at night and no trauma. The painful symptoms are mediated by prostaglandin E2. There will be increased cyclooxygenase activity. That's why the lesion is relieved by aspirin and by anti-inflammatory drugs. The differential diagnosis, broadest abscess, Osteoid osteoma is within the cortex. The broadest abscess is in the medullary canal or in the cancellous bone. The chronic abscess may be surrounded with fibrous tissue and sclerotic bone and may be difficult to differentiate the broadest abscess from the osteoid osteoma. Osteosarcoma and osteoblastoma, which is more than 2 cm in size, and it provokes less reactive host sclerosis. Pathology will see very cellular and vascular stroma with plump but not atypical osteoplast cells, making a matrix of immature woven bone. The heavy mature reactive trabeculae encircles the nidus. There will be no inflammatory cells or dead bone to suggest broadest abscess or osteomyelitis. There will be demarcation between the nidus and the bone and the woven bone will have rimming osteoplasts. It is the most common cause of painful scoliosis in young patients. The curvature of the scoliosis is concave towards the side of the lesion. Assured osteoma of the thoracic spine, the level of the lesion corresponds to the level of the apex of the resultant scoliosis in the thoracic spine. In the lower lumbar, the apex of the scoliosis may be above the lesion. Surgical excision of the lesion can help the scoliosis, except if the curve is large or if the excision is delayed in younger patients.
The most important step in the treatment will be observation and oral anti-inflammatory medications. This is followed by CT-guided radiofrequency ablation if the conservative treatment fails. The radiofrequency ablation is usually done in the majority of cases that are painful except in the spine because of the proximity to the dura and to the nerve roots and don't use it in the hand. Why don't you use it in the digits? Because of the thermal necrosis of the overlying skin and because of the proximity of the neurovascular structures. So the treatment is surgical resection with curettage in the spine and the digits. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.